Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, The Medieval Reader. So unless you've been living under a rock, you know that the Man Booker 2018 long list includes a graphic novel. It's called Sabrina by Nick Darnasso. Now, I don't follow the Man Booker Prize, although I do watch a number of booktubers' videos on the prize and what books um, booktubers like, and I add it to my Goodreads shelf, but I don't generally read a lot of new releases because I don't have access to a public library when I'm at my research university. There's just a lot of much older books, but not necessarily new releases. It's something I am only able to do in the summer when I'm back home with my family. So although I do agree that Sabrina should not be included on the 2018 list because I don't think that it belongs on the list, which I will get into in a moment, um, the Man Booker is not something that I care too much about, and it's not really the reason why I am making this video. However, if you are interested in people's opinions on the inclusion of Sabrina in the 2018 long list, I highly recommend Jason's video at Old Blue's Chapter and Verse and Neil Griffith's video. Both videos I will link below in the description. So first, should Sabrina be included in the long list? As I said, no, I do not think it should. Um, because I do think that there is a difference between a novel that includes almost predominantly words and a graphic novel in which a considerable amount of the meaning is in the art. I don't think, and um, I don't think that Jason wanted to say this either, if you watch his video he um, speaks very highly of the graphic novel and films, but I don't think, like him, that it cannot be um, a highly sophisticated literary form. Now why am I making this video? Well I'm making this video because I've only very recently gotten into graphic novels. Graphic novels are um, a very new genre for me, mostly because the books tend to be pretty expensive, which makes sense if you've ever even seen a picture book and tried to buy one. You know how expensive picture books are. And that makes sense because art is expensive. Um, so you know, I understand why one volume of a graphic novel like Bone by Jeff Smith, which I've been reading, um, would be like $17, $25. But I've only been able to read Bone because I am back home with my family and the local public library has a number of graphic novels to borrow for free. So of course I'm going to take advantage of that. Um, what really prompted me to consider the graphic novel and to really want to read the graphic novel um, was a course I took as a senior in undergrad, so this is about like four years ago now, um, and in that class, it was a French course, it was a media studies French course, we were introduced to Marshall McLuhan, who was a media theorist and coined the term, the medium is the message, in his book, Understanding Media. It's a very seminal work in the field. The expression, the medium is the message, is all about um, visual rhetoric and how the way something is communicated is the message. It affects the message. It affects how people receive the content. Now, as McLuhan points out, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to separate the content from the medium. Um, and we should know this, I think, pretty well. Um, you know, we use YouTube, we go on Facebook and we uh, share memes, we're on Twitter, we share, share memes, videos. You know, we understand the power of visual rhetoric. We turn on the television, there are advertisements selling us products. We know this, we know how this influences us. But when Marshall McLuhan theorized this in the 1960s, um, advertisement was sort of in its infancy. Um, we didn't have, you know, the, the media presence that we have today. So after we were introduced to Marshall McLuhan, we read Understanding Comics, at least only one chapter of Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. And that was the first time I ever thought about comics as a sophisticated literary form. Um, you know, equal in merit to the novel, to the novella, the short story, theater, what have you. Um, and I highly recommend understanding comics. For anyone who is interested in getting into comics and doesn't really know what the purpose of comics is or, or you know, doesn't really think of it as a high form 
or already is a comics buff but really wants to understand more of the theory. This book was published in 1993, so only one year after I was born, um, and it was also published at a time when graphic novels, so full stories uh, written or presented in comics, that was only emerging as a literary form. So MacLeod wrote this book kind of at the beginning of comics being seen more as a serious form, which I think that there are more people today than say 1993 who think about graphic novels as something serious, uh, think about comics in general as something serious. But that isn't everybody. I have heard some people on uh, booktube dismissing uh, comics and graphic novels, um, thinking it's just only appropriate um, for children or, you know, that it's necessarily silly and can't communicate um, very much because it doesn't use many words or because it uses images. Um, and what caught my attention in particular was the, the part of the book that we were reading. And in it, he talks about, uh, MacLeod, talks about this painting of a pipe that you've probably seen uh, with the caption, Ceci n'est pas une pipe. This is not a pipe. It is a painting by René Magritte. Um, I will link the information below, um, but I'm sure you've seen the painting. And for the longest time, I didn't understand what was going on. I thought, is it an optical illusion? No, that is a pipe. What do you mean this is not a pipe? And it was only in reading MacLeod's book that I realized, no, that isn't a pipe. As Magritte said, you can't fill it. It is an image of a pipe. It is an image of a picture of a pipe. It isn't the actual pipe. You can't smoke that, right? And the difference between an actual pipe you smoke and René Magritte's painting is significant. And that really prompted me to think about visual rhetoric more and to want to read graphic novels and comics. So I have been reading Bone um, and I am currently, I think I just finished the fifth volume. Um, and it's just a great place to start because I think the um, illustrations, the cartoons are really cute and delightful and the story is fairly straightforward. One of the things that McLeod points out in his book Understanding Comics is that sometimes the confusion is deliberate. So. One of the reasons why I kept putting off reading comics, even after being introduced to Scott McCloud's book, is that I found it a bit distracting. I didn't really know how to read them. Sometimes I didn't know what the order of the boxes were or the order of the um, speech bubbles. And what McCloud says in his book is that sometimes that's the purpose. Sometimes the author is trying to make you is trying to get you as a reader to make sense of what's going on. That the reader is actually also the storyteller in the graphic novel because the reader is trying to um, create the story and not just like in a film allow for um, the director to communicate everything to the reader. Jason makes this connection between the graphic novel and the film. I wonder what the difference is between the graphic novel and the film. You know, if the graphic novel demands more from the, the viewer, the reader, um, you know, how does that influence the way that we read the text? So I, I don't think it's exactly like a film, but I do understand why um, this comparison is being made. I think maybe what the Man Booker uh, should do is have its own prize for graphic novels. In the same way that in the United States there is a separate Newbery Prize given for children's novels and a Caldecott Prize given for um, illustrated children's books. Illustrated books are not degraded, they're seen as equally valuable to novels, but we also appreciate how they're different. Um, and I think that a graphic novel is different than a traditional novel, which has only really been around for like 300 years. More on that another time. But that doesn't mean that it's less valuable. It just demands the reader to approach books differently and to um, approach 
um, rhetoric even differently, to know that rhetoric isn't just simply in the words, but also in the images. A meme is a great example of something that could be maybe more similar to a graphic novel than a film, because with a meme you have the art and then you have the words and um, it is up to us to interpret it. We have to have some background knowledge about um, the, the cartoon that is used in the meme. You know, there are certain memes that we are familiar with, like the grumpy cat meme. And you, you have to have a little bit of a background knowledge of it to be able to understand how it's being manipulated in the meme. Um, I think in that way, a graphic novel can be very similar. And McCloud talks about the history of the comics and why American superhero comics seem to be drawn in similar style and why certain styles might be preferred in certain types of comics than other styles. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to say that I am really enjoying my foray into comics and graphic novels and I want to challenge you to read Scott McCloud's book Understanding Comics if you are at all interested in comics. Um, and I do hope that um, car comics and graphic novels continue to be valued, um, but also that we appreciate the differences between graphic novels and traditional novels, or plays, or films, or whatever. Um, let me know your thoughts, um, either about the inclusion of Sabrina in the Man Booker Log List, um, or anything that I've discussed in this video. Um, thank you everybody for watching, and I will talk to you later. Bye now.